Hey, what's up coaches? Welcome back to the podcast. Today we have Coach Ray from Soro Football Academy. He is based in California. I love this interview because he goes very deep into the power of networking and how he went from zero to 70 clients. He's doing this full time. So there's a lot of nuggets that he shares inside this interview here with Coach Leo. So sit back, enjoy this interview, and uh, I'm excited to uh, show you this. So my coaching journey started with um, one of my buddies suggesting that I come out and help him coach. And I was a little bit iffy at first. I didn't know if this was something I actually would be good at and something I wanted to do. But um, the first day that I started coaching, I just absolutely fell in love with it. When I realized the impact that I could have in the world and how I can help these players develop their game, it really, uh, it really like hit a spark in me that from that day on, it just has been growing and growing and growing. And I've just been able to take my first day of coaching into the rest of my life, it feels like. So it was a really beautiful, uh, beautiful decision that I made to, to, to start coaching. And I, I've never looked back ever since. Awesome. Was, was coaching something that, was it a, a personal experience when you were younger? Because sometimes, like, for example, for myself, I had a negative experience with coaches when gotcha. I was younger. And that inspired me to get into coaching. What was your sort of background? Mine was, um, so, so my father was my coach until I was like about like 13. And then he was, of course, still my coach, but he just wasn't on the field with me, right? My experience was absolutely amazing. I loved it, right? Um, I had other coaches from that point I was about 13. I had other coaches that took over, and they were amazing as well. So I'm thinking, like, okay, these, these guys, like, really, really do a good job, and, and they know something, right? And I really had a great experience. Um, I wanted to live up to that experience as well. And it's funny because... You know, the game, I feel like, is always evolving. Mm -hmm. And for starting from when I started coaching to where I'm at now, there has been so much that changed about my coaching style that I look back and I'm like, I had a great experience. You know, I'm very thankful for what I had. But if I knew what I knew, what I know now back then, and if I got that style of training, would I be a different player? Mm -hmm. You know, so... So now I look at it like, okay, I, now I know what I know. Can I share it to these players? Can I give it to these players so that they can perform at their highest level? And it's just been, it's just been awesome ever since. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely loving the I'm, – I'm learning every single day. I'm growing every single day. And I'm, you know, I basically prepare, execute, and evaluate. I prepare the training session. I execute the training session. And I evaluate the training session. And I do that in, in most aspects of life. Yeah. And it's been working out really well. I love that. Awesome. So so tell us a bit about then how how did you how did you get into business then? What inspired you to to start up a, a so private soccer training business? The first day, so I worked for a company called Skills Institute. It's a recreational company where players go there to try and become competitive or just to have fun, right? So you have kind of a mix of players. I was, um, first day of coaching, when I spoke to specifically this one girl, she looked at me like this and was like, yeah. And she went and she did it. And I was <laughs> like, oh my gosh, this is, this is beautiful. This, this is amazing, right? Um, I was, so, so then fast forward a few days, I see the same um, same girl with her father, who's you know, this big, strong man, and and I'm like, okay, I I need to. I was sitting in my car, and I'm like, if I don't go up and talk to them and tell them that, hey, can I just run a few drills with your daughter? Like I I coached her this weekend, and mind you, this is my first time ever like working with kids, so mm -hmm. it felt kind of weird to just go up to somebody and ask them like, hey, like I know your daughter, like can I help you guys coach? So it was, a, it was a little bit of like I had to psych myself into it in a way. Mm -hmm. um, but once I went up there and I talked to him, 20-minute training session before I went to referee at the football facility. Yeah. And uh, 
from that moment on, he was like, hey, like, what are you doing right now? I'm like, he's like, you want to have dinner? I was like, I'd love to, but I'm working. And ever since then, this man actually became one of the best influences in my life, became a business mentor, and then actually ended up um, building a field in his backyard. And so now I'm training, I'm training players in this field. And I started with, with one player training her um, for free. And then I found uh, three siblings. So I had four players right off the bat for free. I felt like they were my proof of concept. They were, they were the start to, um, to everything. Mm -hmm. And then started with those four players. And I just, uh, you know, you know, started scaling and started building from that. And I'm like, Hey, here's the product. They're doing well. Like, Mm -hmm. How can we, you know, word of mouth is huge and people are like, what is he doing? That looks like good training. And then, you know, one thing leads to another. And now, now we're at 70 players. So I'm working with a week. So it's, uh, it's, it's, it was a very beautiful process. I absolutely, uh, it was like one decision that led to another, that led to another, that led to another. And all I kept saying was, yes, you know, I, I didn't, even when it was like a little scary at first, you, you don't know what people are going to think and all this kind of stuff. It's, mm. you just, you just go with it, you know? And, yeah. And then we're here today having this Zoom meeting, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Well, congratulations for, for the growth uh, in, in your, in your company. Above it. So, so tell us a little bit about your, your business then. What, what do you guys uh, specialize in then? So, I specialize in uh, group trainings, right? Because I, I do individual trainings and I, we do like technique training, but it's mainly in a group setting because I believe the best way to learn the game is to actually play the game, right? Mm -hmm. We do what I call isolated training, which is basically like cone drills or technique training, right? We do that for the game. We don't play the game for isolated training. So... Okay. What I, what I mean by that is basically my small group sessions are, are where, I, uh, where I do a lot of my teaching, mm -hmm. right? And um, we work on game concepts. We work on, you know, our communication, communication with our teammates, communication with our environment, right? We work on our decision-making. Did the player make the best decision? If the player makes the best decision to pass the ball, but they mess up the pass, hey, good job, keep trying, mm -hmm. right? If the player makes a wrong decision and they should have passed the ball, but instead they dribble, we will talk about the situation to them in front of everybody so everybody understands the concept of, hey, was my teammate open for a 1v0, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, just kind of go through game situations. That's, mm -hmm. what I, that's what I mainly do because these players need to come here build a lot of confidence, go back to their club teams and perform, right? Yeah. Um, so, so group trainings are, are huge for me. Time and space is like absolutely everything. And speed of play is so important, right? Mm -hmm. um, then we also do like, you know, like the isolated training, like how to kick a ball, dribbling, passing, shooting, your first touch, mm -hmm. right? And um, how to like influence the ball and, and all these things, how to curve a ball how to hit the ball at the outside of your foot, how to drive a ball, like mm -hmm. all these like isolated things. We yeah. do those, but for the game, again, in the team setting, right? Mm -hmm. If a player wants a private, like one-on-one -on -one session, I'll have to, I'll have to see like, okay, is this a player that really, I think needs it? Mm -hmm. And is a player that like is compatible basically, mm -hmm. you know? And then even if we do a one-on-one, -on -one, I usually encourage them to come to a group training session because I believe the environment is so important. Players, I believe, are a product of their environment. I put players in an environment where they're going to have a lot of success first. They're going to win most of their battles. They're going to have a great time. It's going to be a very, like, you're going to score a goal. We're going to, you know, <laughs> go, you know. Then we put in players. Then we put players after they've built a lot of confidence. We put them in a situation that might be a little more difficult. A training session that they might lose most of their battles. A training session where the battles that they win, they mean so much because the players are bigger, faster, and stronger than them, and they know that they're good enough. But if they can do it against these players, then it just means so much more, and the mm -hmm. development goes up so much. So mm -hmm. it's it's all about like the two different environments that they're in and, and how they can like manage with with having a lot of confidence and winning a lot of battles, 
to maybe having slightly less confidence during that session and maybe struggling a little bit, but overcoming the challenges and, you know, working through those. So th that's my style of training, mainly, mainly small group training sessions. That's cool. That's cool. So, so you've been a, a soccer trainer for, for a number of years now. What for you is, does a perfect one-on-one -on -one or group session look like? What should it, what, what should be included? Um, the players performing at 100%. The players maintaining focus for an extended period of time. Um, the players, uh, like, staying on task, right? What is the task? What is the objective? What are, what are we doing right now? It's as simple as where the session is, the, the drill is over. We are collecting footballs. How fast can we collect footballs? You'll see kids all the time going, you know, kicking a football in the goal, juggling, talking to their friends. All I ask them is, what is a task? They go complete task. How fast can we complete the task? They're sprinting in and out of places. They're fully engaged, right? For me, it's, it's all about the player's performance, right? And, um, and if the players are not, quote unquote, performing as best as they should, um, as a coach, how can we influence the environment to ensure that we get the best out of our players? Because it's not the player's fault. It's, you should look at yourself first before you even do anything towards the player, right? Mm -hmm. So for me, the perfect training session is, is having the players staying on task 100%, mm -hmm. which basically means staying focused and giving their best effort the whole time of the training session. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Love that. Love that response. So, Raymond, let me take you back to, to when you, you started your, your business. What was or what has been your, your biggest obstacle since you first started? That's a, that's a great question. And, um, you know, I, I want to say for, for a guy like me, a guy that does my style of work, you know, with training, I believe um, fields are so important right? You got to have like a venue to do what you want to do, right? Um, when I didn't have a consistent field, I was kind of working within, um, with a company that already had booked. So I was just kind of filling in these gaps, trying to yeah. get, get going and stuff. I would go to public parks where there was more availability, but then there was less consistency sometimes because club teams would come in, you know, rent the fields without you knowing and the next thing you know you have to move over and move over and then you get pushed out so so fields is, is super important um besides the fields my um it's funny my father always told me this he's like you're you're gonna be great with the kids right mm -hmm. can you handle the parents yeah right? <laughs> for every one player for every one player you have two parents at least you know what i mean yeah. and so and i'm like Okay. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Like, I've handled you. Like, you love me. This is good, you know? Like, it's a good start. Yeah. And uh, I was like, okay. It's, it's funny because, um, you know, the players are, are, are amazing. And, and I love working with the players. Um, parents, I didn't realize how amazing the parents were going to be as well. Mm -hmm. Because I've, I've had such amazing relationships. Like, the first uh, parent I've ever met built a field in his backyard, became my best friend, my mentor, right? So I, like, the first person you meet, like, I met, I got so lucky. Like, I think it's almost unheard of that, like, mm. before you even start something, you meet somebody and they just open your your eyes and your mind to to business and, and a, lot of, a lot of things. So I've met some amazing, amazing parents. Um, I've also had to, you know, I have to deal with certain situations and certain things that aren't ideal, but they're to be expected, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, when you, when you deal with a tough situation or as we call an overload situation, um, how you deal with that is very important. And I've had, had a lot of like, you know, players at practice will like be too physical with a player. And a mm -hmm. parent is like, hey, like my daughter's coming home with, with some bruises and stuff, you know? And you're like, okay, like, how do I, how do I emphasize that, you know, safety is our number one priority. And, you know, it's very important that our players 
are safe and they feel safe, right? But at the same time, have that balance of, hey, this is a this is a physical game. You gotta you gotta win your space. You gotta, you know, like you gotta battle. You gotta you gotta fight for your position in a way that's in a controlled environment, right? So you just there's like a middle ground. You always kind of have to find a. If I, for example, if I if I think uh, if I think heads, I'm like. Mm-hmm. What is what is tails thinking? How do how do I how do I get both perspectives? How do I get both sides and 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 find the middle ground between the two? Mm-hmm. That's, always, that's always like a like a challenge for me, right? I'm I'm thinking like okay, like one side, right? Like I'm thinking one system, but then I'm like, hold on, what is the counter to that? Mm-hmm. What is the other mm-hmm. end? What is, what is the opposite end of the coin? You know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, some some obstacles are definitely fields. Mm-hmm. Learning how to learning how to deal with parents a little bit, right? And it, yeah. it's, it's all a blessing, though, right? These are these are all good things that I think are a part of my process, mm-hmm. and I enjoy going through these things because I'm like, hey, what can I learn about? Okay, fields. Now fields aren't an issue for me. Now yeah. I have fields. It's it's beautiful. Now once I maximize this field, then I got to think again. Okay, what's a what's a bigger field maybe or mm-hmm. something like that, right? Um. Mm-hmm with parents thankfully now it's everything's smooth everything's going but i know there's going to be probably every month something's going to come up and i'm going to have to deal with it and yeah. the way that i deal with it says a lot mm-hmm. right? so, so those are two things um also getting players right an obstacle is it's like once you if you only have four players how did i get to 70 a lot mm-hmm. of it is word of mouth a lot of it is, you know, I believe in, in manifestation. I believe in what you put out to the universe, you can get back. But I also mm-hmm. believe in hard work, right? So uh, Instagram, Facebook, uh, website, right? All mm-hmm. these things, they add to it when, when somebody wants to come to the program. Um, but it's it's better to keep a, keep a player than to mm-hmm. get a new player, Yeah. right? So, so getting a player is one thing, keeping a player is another thing. So... You know, fields, parents, and players. Mm-hmm. Those, are the, uh, those are the three mm-hmm. things that I would say are "quote unquote" obstacles. But yeah. really, they're they're like learning opportunities. They're they're yeah. situations that you get put in. That once you figure them out, and even if you didn't do the best, once you figure it out, you're like, oh, this is what I could do better next time. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Just keep it and move forward. You know. Yeah, love that. Love that. So. What would you say is one big um, problem that a lot of American youth players have today? What what are they? What are players struggling with the most? Would you say? I love that question so much. Um, speed of play, mm-hmm. the speed of play. I I think um, you know some people. It's the game is so simple, and if you play simple, it's fast, mm-hmm. right? Um, once we start complicating things and, and, you know, slowing it down and trying to make that extra move, it slows everything down. But if you can get the ball and play the ball, get the ball and play the ball, get the ball and play the ball, you don't even have to beat a player one-on-one. They're going to think you're going to pass it and you're just going to dribble, mm-hmm. right? Training going in, in a very good place, I think, right? And in the U.S., especially in San Diego, uh, football is growing a lot. We have mm-hmm. two new teams. One of them is a men's second division team. The other one is a women's first division team. And uh, there's, there's a lot of, uh, like, hype around the game right now. Private training is, I think, so important because club teams don't really offer that. Club mm-hmm. teams will have a coach, a head coach, and then the, the head coach just deals with the whole team, right? There's no real assistant coach right, for, for these youth players and, and stuff like that. Once you reach, like, um, MLS, Natch, their academy level, they yeah. will have assistant coaches and stuff. But at a younger age, there's – it's almost, like, unheard of, right? Mm-hmm. Unless a coach is, like, filling in for another coach, there's no assistant coach. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think two things, right? The head coach, the role is, like, the team intention. What is mm-hmm. the team doing, right? Uh, what are the trends that we see in our team? The assistant coach – is like the individual player coach mm-hmm. where, they, where they go and they talk to each and individual player and like, hey, did you understand what you were supposed to do here? 
did you see the situation and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So that's during their training session. After their training session, no club is offering like private training. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if they do, they go to like a specific like speed school, strength school, or like um, like a ball mastery school. Yeah. Right. And they they outsource it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. For a guy like me, this is this is a really good thing because if um you know hopefully the coach because I'm a soccer trainer, I'm a football trainer, right? Some coaches think that they are the they are the elite football training coach and that they know exactly what these players need and this and that. But I look mm -hmm. at it like I'm a supplement to them. Yeah. If if they bring their team to me, what I'm gonna do is understand how that coach wants to play and get these players playing to that system as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. And then give them back to the coach and say, here are your players now. You saw the games and drills we were running. If you do something similar to this, you will be great. Your team mm -hmm. is, will be amazing. And then mm -hmm. if, if they have something, some feedback or anything, I'm always willing to listen and learn. Like, I absolutely love it. If a coach comes to me and says, hey, I, I saw you do this um, – do this game could you have influenced the environment and made the game better by this and i'm mm -hmm. like oh maybe i could have that's that's an amazing uh an amazing like reflection you have thank you for sharing with me mm -hmm. you know like i love um i love collaborating with coaches I, it hasn't happened yet but i really see that like for me personally i'll go to these coaches i'll go to these teams and say hey I can really help your players out. And here's the proof because I have 70 players that are performing absolutely great right now. If I, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if I get one of your teams, two of your teams, three of your teams, and I just support the coach and what the coach wants, your players will perform better. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so that's that's one way. Another mm -hmm. way I see it, position-specific training. Yeah. Player-specific training, right? Um, players don't understand their positions 100%. And then when I say position-specific, <coughs> they can learn their position right now. Mm -hmm. Will it be their position for the rest of their game? Probably not. Mm -hmm. Are they going to switch from a center mid to a right wing, from a right wing to a striker? Probably. Mm -hmm. because before a kid is like 13, 14, even, even when they're 18, they yeah. can switch from a, from a striker to a center mid. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but, but we start with one position at a time, right? Like what are they playing right now? Help them understand that position to their best ability and to our best ability. Then move on to another position that might be next to them that they have to work with. Mm -hmm. right? And then maybe, oh, hey, I, I got played as a, as, a, as a center mid today. I have mm -hmm. no idea what's the most important thing for a center mid. <laughs> Apparently, yeah. I'm not checking my shoulders enough, like, mm -hmm. you know? So I see position specific and, like, you know, one-on-one -on -one training going really far. Yeah, that's awesome. So if, if a, a, a trainer uh, came up to you and said, mm -hmm. Raymond, I want to I wanna start a business – like yours what what would you say to them um i would say would you do it for free mm -hmm. would you would you do it for free because i like my start i think i had like maybe two three months where i just did it because i loved it yeah. i did it because i saw I, I can improve these players and i can help these players and through that process i realized that i can make a living doing this Right. So I think I, I would ask them first if they could, if they would do it for free. Right. Not only because of that, but because, you know, I hope to get to a point where one day, you know, money isn't an issue for me. Mm -hmm. And if money is not an issue, then you can give back and, and go to your job. Quote unquote, this is a, this is a job, by the way. Right. This mm -hmm. doesn't feel like a job, but it's a job. Right. Um, <laughs> go, go to your job and, and be happy and do it for free. You know, and so, and, and like scholarship players and all these things. And so I would ask them if, if they would, if they would be able to do it for free. Awesome. 
And if they say no? If they say no, then I'm like, what would you be able to do for free? What do you love doing that you would do for free? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would, it would, we'd go into another subject or something, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So when, when a new client joins your program, what, mm -hmm. what do you look for? What's the first thing you, you look for when a player joins you? Um, when the player comes to the training session, right, I look for, are they having fun, right? Are they giving their best effort? So basically having fun means do they love the game? Can I show them the game so they can love the game? And are they giving their best effort? I'll give you an example. I have uh, two girls, they're twins, right? Mm -hmm. they, they came to me a little bit like, a little in their shell, a little bit, um, mm -hmm. you know, kind of like they, they I, you kind of felt they wanted to be there, but maybe mom pushed them a little bit, just a little bit, just to show up, you know, mm -hmm. and like whatever. Mm -hmm. they, they've been coming for uh, 10 training sessions, right? Mm -hmm. the, the difference that I've seen in them has, it just, it's beautiful. It's, it's really beautiful because mm -hmm. all I've been doing is putting them in situations to succeed. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've been showing them, hey, this is the goal. Go score in the goal, yeah. right? And then you'll see them after they score. They're like, yeah. I'm like, excited. <laughs> you know, yeah. where before it was kind of just like, I don't know if I'm good enough. I'm get, like, I can't kick this ball here. I, I, I can't do it. It's hard. Like, I just, it's so mm -hmm. difficult, right? And then now you see them battling defensively like getting into the position like they transition so well to defending and most players mm -hmm. they don't really transition to defending very well but mm -hmm. these girls specifically are transitioning very well and then anytime they score they're like, <laughs> like you know? but when they started it was very like meh meh you know but now yeah. it's like they, they found it you know when you when you find that like hey i mm -hmm. love scoring goals hey, I love winning, mm. right? When you find that, it's so beautiful. That, that process for me is, is absolutely amazing. I love it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So love the game and give your best effort is really, you know? That's what you look for. Perfect. So t tell us a bit about your, your sales and marketing process then. How, how do you market and how, how do you sell your business? So... How I sell my business is I have the parents sell the business for me, right? Word of mouth is huge. I'm um, I'm a big, I connect with people very well. That is one of my strong suits. Um, through those connections with the players, of course, first the players, right? And then the parents. Mm -hmm. The parents have just been like, you know, some, some people, they tell uh, people two years ago that, hey, you know, there's this trainer in town. He's doing really good. Like, I would recommend you go to him. These yeah. people don't come two, until two years later, mm -hmm. right? Some people, it takes one week. Some people, in the, in the second you tell them, they're going to give you a call. Other yeah. people, it's going to take a long time, right? It takes a while, yeah. So it's, it's all like, like basically trust the process. For me, it's, it's the parents. I... It's the parents and the proof of um, product, right? Like the mm -hmm. product itself is, is saying something. Facebook and uh, mm -hmm. my website, that, that of course, I think it helps a lot, right? Because when, when parents have a clear reference of like, oh, okay, this is who he is. This is what he's doing. This is, you know, yeah. they see a video, they see the photos and, and come try it out, right? Mm -hmm. It really helps, right? So... So that's important. Um, another one though, right? This is actually the key right here for my, for my huge growth right now. Um, I partnered up with the facility that I used to work for, right? Mm -hmm. So remember, they're recreational players that want to go competitive, right? Once they are competitive players, they leave that program. That's how Soro Football actually kind of got started is because Players were leaving that program and going to club. And I'm like, hold on. There's like so much more work to be done here. Yeah. Right. So, so right now there's basically once they reach level three, which is the highest level, mm -hmm. gonna, the, the coaches I've gotten like really good with the coaches and the, the owners and the like program director that they're all 
referencing those players that are competitive, they're mm. all bringing them to Soro. Okay. Right? So, so now it's like we have this little like feeder system where mm -hmm. this program is, you know, once they we reach the highest level, they're competitive players, and then they start at Soro, and then we start building up. Okay, you know? awesome. So, how how do you build a partnership like that? Um, I worked hard. <laughs> I I did mm -hmm. a lot. Um, in terms of, I was coaching at their facility. Right. And then when I was taking a step back from coaching, anytime they needed me to help and I was available, I was always help. Right. Um, that facility in general, they needed referees sometimes. Anytime they need a ref, they call me. I'll go and I'll referee and I'll I'll build rapport. Right. I'll do I'll do the uh, I'll do the work and then enjoy the work I'm doing and then, you know, give give many thanks. And I help them, you know, just little bits here and there. Like, for example. I live in, I live like 20, 30 minutes away from the facility. They, they buy some, some clothes from, from like a warehouse over here. I'll go pick it up and I'll drop it off. Cause it's just like on my way. Mm. So I'll do these little things and I'll help out. And then next thing you know, one thing leads to another. And it's, that story is beautiful actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, um, it's, it's beautiful because you know, there's a there's a Division One college over here, right? Mm. Like uh, San Diego State University against not against each other, but it was a competition, right? Like who's gonna be able to work at this facility? Okay. Right. He's like, it, I didn't even know that I was in competition with this guy, mm. and and it's a friendly comp. It's not like I'm trying to bring him down. He's trying to bring me down. It's like no, yeah. what, what can I offer? Yeah. Right. And they the facility actually came to me and was like, hey, like, you know, you're doing part, you're, you're training, we want to work with you. Mm -hmm. And I was, it was kind of like a moment for me where I was like, wow, like all the hard work I've done has really helped Pay me enough. out. Mm -hmm. Paying off big time because I didn't even know this was an opportunity. Yeah. They came to me and they presented it to me and we've made an agreement and it's just been, it's just been amazing, you know. Mm -hmm. They're building a seven versus seven and yeah. four versus four. Like they're expanding their turf, right? Mm -hmm. The construction starts next week. Once that happens, my program goes there and it's it's a full feeder system. That's amazing. Well, congratulations Thank for you. that. Thank you. Um now how long did that that partnership take to to where to get to where it is now three years three two years. and a half years three years yeah mm -hmm. yeah and then it's 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 funny because the this partnership should have happened uh like six months ago right mm -hmm. but you know things things happen that are out of your control like you, you cannot control delays on the city or construction or whatever yeah. it is right you just have to deal with it right like you whatever your starting point is do your best that's all you can do yeah so it's been uh it's it has been two and a half three years and you know looking back it's like what a what a great like you know what a great process i think yeah. uh, it was worth you know, it right worth it for sure worth it it's still worth. even if uh like i said even if the worst case scenario it doesn't happen i still mm. have a field i still yeah. have you know, like a like a backup plan essentially you know mm -hmm. And um, it's just, it's beautiful. The process is amazing. I would, every uh, every step of the way, right? Mm -hmm. Every day, the moments, you just learn and you just keep moving forward. You learn and you keep moving forward. I look at it yeah. like every day is a new starting point. Yeah. Every day, you start wherever you are and you just have to do your best to improve. That's it. Mm -hmm. No matter if you have a high starting point that day or a low starting point that day, you have to start where you're at and just give your best effort. That's all. Awesome. Yeah, completely agree. I completely agree. So, Raymond, my my last question for you then: Where do you see Sorrow Football Academy in the next five years from now? That's a that's a great question. That's a great question. I see. Um, <clears throat> I see Sorrow Football Academy running camps. Every school break, 
running camps, right? Um, during those camps, you know, talk about, have like a theme for each mm-hmm. camp, have a theme for each group, because each group needs a different, needs a different thing. Um, in terms of the regular training program, I see training sessions, like four training sessions, five training sessions within one hour. So I'm managing um, coaches, I'm teaching coaches, I'm coaching coaches. It's actually mm-hmm. part of my role right now, but a much smaller part of my role because mm-hmm. I don't have too many coaches I need to coach now. But yeah. I'm, I'm really preparing myself for it. Mm-hmm. Um, and how I'm doing that is helping. Um, I'm a consultant for North County Soccer Park Skills Institute, and I coach their coaches, right? Mm-hmm. So that's really helping me learn how to teach. Mm-hmm. Like, actual coaches you know mm-hmm. um so I, I see myself having you know four or five training sessions within the same hour and, and managing all those coaches and players and making sure everything's running smooth basically like how i like to describe it is like putting out fires if there's you know situation going on here help out with that situation another situation go mm-hmm. there and just kind of like i really love my fire hose and i'm just going <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, awesome. So do you have a specific goal, the amount of players you want to have in your in your academy? Um, I'm taking it step by step now, right? Okay. Um, I want to reach 100 players, mm-hmm. right? But I would love to have three, four, or 500 players, you mm-hmm. know? But um, like right now, my, my immediate goal is I'm at 70, which is amazing. I would love to get to 100. Okay. That's awesome. Perfect. All right. Well, well, thanks, uh, Raymond, for, for jumping on, for, for sharing your story with uh, our audience, our viewers, our listeners. Um, now, if there's any coach that is watching and is, is inspired by your story and wants to follow you or even reach out to you, what's the best way to do that? Um, Instagram, Facebook, or, uh, or look on my website at Soro Football. Okay. Right, so sorofootball.com or um, I, th- I think my Instagram handle is sorofootball as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So if you look up uh, sorofootball, you'll be able to find me on Instagram and Facebook. And, you know, if anybody has any questions or has any comments or just wants it's like to make a friend or something, right, around, around the game and stuff, I'm more than willing to have these conversations. Like, this is what I live for, you know, so. <laughs> Perfect. Like, That's awesome. Thing. That's awesome. And what we'll do is we'll put all of those, all of your details on the bottom of the video so, so people can reach out to you. Perfect. Leo, thank you so much for, uh, for this interview. I really, uh, I really like what you're doing. This is, uh, this is an amazing experience for me. This is actually my first experience ever kind of talking about what I'm doing in this way. And uh, I, I couldn't be more happy. This was, this was awesome, Leo. So thank you for, uh, for doing this. No problem. Well, good luck with everything. And I hope you reach your your 500 players in the next five years. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Leo. I really appreciate you. All right. Take care, Raymond. Awesome. You as well. Bye-bye.